With this video, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the heart, the flow of blood through the heart, and then also the flow of blood through the rest of the body. If you look at the diagram on the left side of your screen, we've got a heart that has been cut longitudinally so that you can see inside of it. And what you'll notice as you look inside that heart is that basically it's a hollow structure with some muscular walls. And that makes sense because the role of the heart is to pump blood through the body. One of the things that you may notice is that we've got a right side of the heart, so I'm kind of outlining its boundaries here, and then there's a left side over here, so I'm kind of outlining the left side's boundaries now. And you'll notice there's quite a bit of difference when you compare the wall of the left side of the heart to the wall of the right side of the heart. This has to do with where the blood coming from each of these two sides is actually going. So blood that's on the right side of the heart gets pumped just a few inches up through these blood vessels to go to the lungs. There it's gonna pick up oxygen and then it's gonna return just a few inches back to the heart. Because the right side of the heart doesn't have to pump blood very far, it's got a thin wall. It doesn't need to be able to pump with a lot of strength. If you look over here on the left side of the heart, you'll notice that the wall is quite a bit thicker. And the reason for that is the left side of the heart is taking blood that's returning from the lungs. This is blood that's just been oxygenated and it's pumping it out through this big vessel that you see right here to the rest of the body. So it's responsible for pumping blood against the flow of gravity up into the head. It's gonna need to pump blood down to the fingertips and the tips of the toes and everywhere in between. And so it needs to have quite a bit more power to it. It needs to be a lot stronger so that it's able to actually do that. So knowing that, that can help you to kind of differentiate the left side of the heart from the right side of the heart when you're working with diagrams or you're working with models or you're working with actual hearts. With that being said, what I wanna do now is talk about some of the specific structures on the heart, um, where they're located and start to get you familiar with the heart's anatomy so that you can start to understand how blood actually moves through it. So I mentioned the chambers previously. There are two upper chambers. So this is one of them here on the left side. Here's the other one here over on the right side. Together, these are known as atria. So atria is the plural. If we're talking about just one of these chambers, such as this one here, we would say that this is the right atrium. So this is the right atrium. Over here we have the left atrium, and that's just the name for the upper chambers of the heart. The heart also has two lower chambers. So there's one here that I'm outlining. There's another one over here on the left side that I'm outlining. And these lower chambers are known as ventricles. So we have a right ventricle here and a left ventricle over here. You'll also notice that in between the ventricles, we have these structures. So there's one here, here's another one, there's a third one back in here, and then a fourth one right along here. We have these structures that are represented in white, and they are known as valves. So I'm gonna start with this valve right here that sits in between the right atrium and the right ventricle. This valve is known as the tricuspid valve, and its role is to ensure that when blood moves from the atria, down into the ventricles, that when the ventricle contracts and it applies pressure to that blood, it doesn't force the blood backwards into the atria. So the tricuspid valve does that on the right side. We have a bicuspid valve on the left side that sits between the left atrium and the left ventricle, so that again, we ensure that blood moves from atria to ventricles. When the ventricle contracts with a lot of force, the blood sloshes back against that valve and closes it, so that we don't have blood moving back into the atria. So we want a one-way flow of blood through the heart. We don't want blood moving in two directions. We've got a couple of other valves. So you can see one of them right here. The other one you can just barely see. It's mostly behind this pulmonary trunk. That's the name of the vessel here. These are our um, semilunar valves or SL valves. And the reason that they're known as the semilunar valves has to do with their shape. So if you look at this portion that's kind of colored white, you'll notice that these cusps of the valves almost look like a half moon. So semilunar basically is where they're getting their name from. 
This one that sits right here is the pulmonary semilunar valve. So it's between the right ventricle and this vessel that again is taking blood to the lungs or to the pulmonary system, hence the name. The role of this particular valve is to ensure that when the ventricle contracts and it pushes blood up into this vessel and that blood starts to move towards the lungs, that that blood doesn't backflow and actually go back into the right ventricle. The aortic semilunar is on the left side of the heart, so it sits between the left ventricle and the aorta, which you can see right here, and it has a similar job. When the left ventricle contracts, we want the blood to go up into the aorta and from there out to the rest of the body. This aortic semilunar valve is going to ensure that none of that blood actually backflows back into the left ventricle. So we've got this one-way flow of blood that's moving through the heart at all times. So we've talked about the chambers and we've talked about the valves and kind of the roles of these different structures. What I wanna do now is also just talk briefly um, about some of the blood vessels, the major ones that are attached to the heart um, and talk about their role. So we're gonna talk about some veins that are attached to the heart and some arteries that are attached to the heart. I want to say this before we go into that. There is a common misconception out there that I often hear that arteries are always carrying oxygenated blood and for that reason, when you look at them in diagrams, they're always color-coded red because arterial blood, that really highly oxygenated blood, has more of a reddish color to it, right? And then I've also heard that veins are always carrying deoxygenated blood, and because of that, they're color-coded blue um, because of the deoxygenated blood that's contained within them. That is true in all cases, except for with one of the arteries and one of the veins that's actually attached to the heart. So a better definition of a vein is simply that it's a vessel that is returning blood to the heart. That's your best definition. Sometimes veins are carrying oxygenated blood in the case of at least one vein that's returning blood to the heart from the lungs. But sometimes they're not. Arteries, a better definition for them would be that these are vessels that are carrying blood away from the heart. Usually they're carrying oxygenated blood, but that's not always the case with one of these arteries that we're gonna see that's actually carrying blood away from the heart and carrying that blood to the lung so that it can pick up oxygen. So if you look at this diagram here, okay, we've got our first vessel I wanna mention. Um, this one is what's known as the superior vena cava. So it is a vein that is returning deoxygenated blood to the right atrium. And basically the blood that's returning to the heart from the superior vena cava is coming from areas of the body that are above the level of the heart. You'll notice there's a little opening right here in the wall of the right atrium that allows that blood coming from above the levels of the heart to make its way back into the right atrium. This is what's known as the inferior vena cava, so inferior because it's below the level of the heart here. It comes up back behind the heart. You can see the opening right here in the right atrium wall where that inferior vena cava is going to deposit its blood also into the right atrium. So the inferior vena cava is bringing blood back to the heart from areas of the body that are below the level of the heart. But these vena cava, so superior and inferior, are the major veins that are returning blood to the heart from areas of the body. If you look at this picture over here, so I've talked about the fact that blood goes from the right atrium down into the right ventricle, and from there the right ventricle contracts and it pushes that blood up into this vessel, which is known as the pulmonary trunk, and the pulmonary trunk splits. So here's a branch of the pulmonary trunk that goes off to the left, and here's a branch of the pulmonary trunk that goes off to the right. The reason for this is this blood that was pushed from the right ventricle up into that pulmonary trunk is making its way to the lungs. And we, of course, have a left lung and a right lung. So this vessel is going to split to allow that blood to go to the lungs and to pick up oxygen. So this is what's known as the pulmonary artery here. Okay, It's taking blood away from the heart, so it is an artery 
However, the blood that's traveling through these vessels happens to be deoxygenated blood. So this is that one exception to the rule where we've got an artery um, that's taking blood away from the heart, but it's deoxygenated blood because this is blood that has lost its oxygen to the tissues of the body and it needs to go to the lungs to pick up oxygen before returning to the heart. So this blood comes up in here through the pulmonary arteries, it goes out to the lungs, oxygen, and then it comes right back to the heart. Now we've got highly oxygenated blood, so the vessels that are carrying it were color coding in red. If you look right here, you can see two vessels that are entering into the left atrium. These are the left pulmonary veins. So they're coming back from the left lung, bringing that blood that has been highly oxygenated back to the left atrium. Over here on this side, you can also see two vessels. So these actually start over here. They're coming back from the right lung. They run behind the heart. And then over here in this area that you can't see because it's blocked by the pulmonary trunk, there's an opening in the left atrium that allows these right pulmonary arteries to, sorry, right pulmonary veins to deposit their blood into the left atrium. From there, the blood moves down into the left ventricle, then the left ventricle contracts with a lot of force, right? Remember, that's why it's got its thick wall, and the left ventricle pushes that blood up into the aorta. So this is the aorta, at least the initial part of the aorta. This is the largest artery in the body, and its job is to take this oxygenated blood coming from the left side of the heart and to distribute it to all of the tissues and all of the organs of the body. So now that we've become familiar with some of the structures of the heart and we've learned a little bit about the way that blood actually moves through the heart, what I wanna do now is look at blood flow through the heart and then also look at the circuits that are kind of connected up to the heart. So if you look over here, here's the right side of the heart, right? So we've got the right atrium, superior vena cava is bringing blood back, inferior vena cava is bringing blood back. And from the right atrium, that blood goes down into the right ventricle. The right side of the heart, and more specifically the right ventricle, is the pump for what's known as the pulmonary circuit. So the pulmonary circuit is that pathway that I'm outlining now that blood takes, deoxygenated blood, to the lungs to pick up oxygen. And then it also includes the pathway that the now highly oxygenated blood takes back to the left side of the heart. So all of that that you saw here, right side of the heart is its pump, all the way over to the start of the left side of the heart is the pulmonary circuit. So blood returns from the lungs first into the left atrium, from there down into the left ventricle. And the left side of the heart, and more specifically the left ventricle, is the pump for what's known as the systemic circuit. So the left side of the heart contracts, specifically the left ventricle. That pushes blood up into the aorta, and then the aorta travels down and has a whole bunch of blood vessels that branch off of it that provide oxygen and nutrients to all the tissues, all the organs, all the cells of the body. Then that blood, of course, returns back, having given up much of its oxygen to the right side of the heart. This segment over here that takes blood to all of the systems of the body or to the entire system is what's known as the systemic circuit. So it's gonna include the left side of the heart, which is its pump, the blood vessels that take blood out to the tissues of the body, as well as the blood vessels that return that blood to the right side of the heart.